when I read the first time about miracle competitions, um, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that sounds wild. I don't know if that really happened. But then when you actually start reading this idea of miracle competitions again and again in so many different traditions and so many different contexts for me, it makes it very clear somehow how real it really is. Today we will speak about uh, miracle competitions and uh, this whole concept of miracles and we will do it as you will see in four traditions. We will do it in four different traditions aiming to extract the holistic uh, view of it. Now, the essential uh, truth of any spiritual tradition is that spirit is above matter. And what does it mean, spirit above matter? It means that the spirit can dominate matter. It stands in the essence, whether you're a Buddhist, a Christian, a Sikh, a, a Hindu, a Jew, a Zoroastric, or whatever, new religions are appearing, whatever they are. They all hold that fundamental uh, idea, that concept that spirit is above matter. But when we look around, we see that it's not really like that. We see that actually, you tell the mountain, mountain walk to the sea, and the mountain is as much there as it has been for a very long time. You try with your uh, attention to shift some dials of a clock, you can't even move a little needle with the power of your thought. It's very, um, very, very small or almost insignificant, the power of spirit over matter, apparently, in our daily experience. So we said, biggest uh, or fundamental assumption of spiritual tradition, spirit is above matter. The day-to-day -day experience is not the same. And the um, most of humanity, if you look in the big scale of humanity over history, believes in a spiritual tradition. At least this is the history books that we have now. So what, what's the catch? Why is it that most people believe in something that's apparently contradictory? Apparently matter is above spirit and yet everybody believes, at least to a degree, in a spiritual tradition. And one of the answers to this question is miracles. Miracles are basically an expression, a spontaneous expression of uh, mind over matter, and more than that, soul and spirit over matter. It is like this veil which gives us the feeling that the spirit or consciousness or our inner world is something that doesn't exist. It exists in parallel, if we want to quote Descartes. It exists in parallel to the physical world. We suddenly see how it can control, how it can manifest. And those moments of spiritual miracles, they stand as the baseline of almost every spiritual tradition. It stands there in the core of the belief, and the belief is revealed. In accordance to that miracle, we can see that spirit is above matter in that way. Christ resurrected the bush did not burn, and so forth, and therefore reality is like that. So the miracles have a tremendous psychological importance and a tremendous uh, factor of unity when it comes to all of uh, world traditions. Wherever you're watching this video, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell and the, the, all the little everything, buttons that everything. you could possibly... We encourage you to hit the bell. And for sure yes. subscribe also. Subscribe. Yes. We will talk in this um, first series of our lectures on uh, epic spiritual moments about miracle competitions. And um, these uh, 
have somehow, they play a very interesting role in the spiritual field because one thing is you have a miracle that's already very amazing. And for example, if you know from uh, the Christian context, the church will only uh, lift someone to sainthood, so to say, if miracles occurred uh, in their life or in their presence also after their death, if there's miracles with their picture or something like that. Um, then it can be considered to make them a saint. So miracles are um, like a proof for um, your spiritual size, if you will, for your spiritual accomplishment. Um, but then a whole other thing is if those miracles, they happen at will, so um, that saint would manifest miracles at will due to their um, practice, due to their presence and incantations or whatever they would be doing um, and then a whole other thing is that that could be even uh, summoned within the context of a competition where you are face to face with another super accomplished being in whatever uh, dark or light art they might be playing in and um, in, the, in the face of uh, such an intensity to be able to uh, manifest um, miracles at will, that is quite something. Now, when you read the first time, at least for me it was like that, when I read the first time about miracle competitions, um, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that sounds wild. I don't know if that really happened. It's, you know, from some hundred years ago, some Tibetan person who was maybe very much in love with the saint, they wrote it like that, okay. But then when you actually start reading this idea of miracle competitions again and again in so many different traditions and so many different contexts, for me, it makes it very clear somehow how um, uh, yeah, real it really is. It seems to um, give a very clear, um, or let, let's say underlines very clearly how um, it's a practice that is not just fixed in one tradition, it's not just fixed in one specific time, but you can find these miracle competitions throughout various traditions and on a quite a bit of a timeline. We will be going from, uh, what was it, 700 before Christ up to, up 1900. to yeah, this, no. yeah, no, no, no. 1980 or what, when did he yeah. die? Yeah, up yeah. to so a we'll, generation or two ago. Yeah, we'll cover a nice 2,000 plus years there on the scale. And um, uh, we will see, again, these competitions occur in many different moments and many different traditions. Now, they would typically have a reason to happen. And there are many different reasons for such miracle competitions to occur. And um, as much as we might have the idea that, oh, you know, these, look at these masters, they uh, are just as competitive as everybody else, but um, much rather the idea for uh, these masters would be to um, achieve something specific through these uh, competition moments. On one hand, you would have friendly uh, miracle competitions where you would have two groups of people that um, maybe have some different practices and then they would display their powers and you could then see what they are capable of doing, getting an idea of what their practice would lead to, uh, what kind of virtues they possess and then you could even have a moment of exchange. You find uh, such moments described in Yeshe Tsugyal's um, Sky Dancer, it's a wonderful book that I recommend to read. We also have uh, various different kinds of competitions in that book, but especially these moments of uh, different practitioners meeting and then understanding, okay, what are you capable of? And then entering together into meditation, having this very deep uh, merging of the souls within meditation. And through one of such uh, sessions of meditating together, they would exchange all their amazing qualities and capacities with one another. So this would be a practice in itself to actually, through identification, learn from one another and then obtain these uh, wonderful, miraculous qualities from one another. Another reason for uh, miracle competitions to occur would be for training purposes. So even one master would bring all his disciples and then they would 
fight with each other, so to say, fight. They would compete with one another, showing different qualities, different things, and then again, having the capacity to exchange if they want to, uh, and so forth. And uh, that, let's say, historically speaking, the miracle competitions that became more known are typically the ones that lead to big uh, historic events. So um, these are miracle competitions that would lead, um, for example, a, a part of a country or even a whole nation to uh, change their religion, to change their belief um, without a whole lot of bloodshed, um, which unfortunately also happens in this world, um, but simply by uh, having the leaders of those um, beliefs and those religions go in a miracle competition against one another, and then we would decide, or the, typically the king would decide, or the queen would decide, who would be uh, like which, who would be the winner, and then therefore which would be the religion to take on. Which is a very interesting setting in itself. Imagine nowadays we would have uh, the leader of uh, one religion and the leader of the other religion. They make a miracle competition, and everybody is like, "Oh, you see, this one won. Let's follow this religion." Apparently, you get more uh, virtue, more perfection from this one. So this makes sense to follow. It's a very interesting concept and shows you also uh, the quality of people somehow that were uh, part of such uh, shifts um, within history that were induced by miracle competitions. I want to make very clear that it's not so much about masters sort of fighting against each other. It's not so much the point, but it usually would have um, one of these meanings that were discussed. Um, if you want to read a little bit uh, about miracle competitions, there are several books that you find um, interesting um, examples. The Yeshitsu Gyal's Sky Dancer is one of them. We'll be reading also from uh, the biography of St. Patrick today. Um, also the Lives and Liberation of Princess Mandarava have a lot of them inside. Bible. Also, this book that we keep suggesting, Daniel Odier's Tantric Quest, has one of these typical moments of two groups of religious people coming together and having an exchange um, with this uh, age-old discussion between Hindus and Buddhists. Is it an Atman, a self inside of us, or is it the Anatta, the nothingness that we are seeking out? There's a whole chapter on this sort of discussion to give you a little bit of an idea of how these competitions can look like. Now, there is a mechanism to uh, all of this miracle creation, if you will, um, which is quite known in the world of the yogis and the tantrics. You might have heard of the word Siddhi, uh, even Mahasiddha, the name of uh, our yoga school here, uh, has this um, root in it. And CD is basically an acquirement that um, you gain through perfecting yourself. A CD is a supernatural power, is, um, um, let's say, considered a mark of perfecting yourself. Being able to sort of make a miracle, manifest something, like Uriel put it, where clearly the spirit stands over matter and you are able to do things that uh, the average person would not be able to do. The, uh, let's say, mechanism behind obtaining such um, levels of perfection is very simple. If you put in the effort of perfecting a certain virtue, you will obtain a CD. You will obtain a supernatural power. So all of you out there who always dreamt to become Spider-Man, you might not become Spider-Man, but get some uh, other interesting force. You just need to put in the effort. Take a virtue, master it, a CD will arise from that. It's a very simple equation. You might ask yourself, why is it that a um, uh, thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, it would be sort of, um, late, let's say, a bit more full display uh, of miracles. This one uh, lights the water on fire and this one over here lets rainbows appear and even within one sitting of um, miracle competition there you have 
20 people displaying amazing capacities. Well, it is obviously because it was also more typical to put a lot of austerity into your spiritual practice. And it is the same mechanism today. If you take a more recent miracle worker like uh, Padre Pio, he put a lot of austerity into his prayer, into his um, path. He was, as uh, he also confessed himself, very tested, very tempted all the time and he would put a lot, a lot of effort to um, remain very um, faithful, very virtuous at heart and he would manifest a lot, a lot of miracles, uh, interesting medical miracles. For example, he healed a, a little girl who didn't have even eyes in her eye sockets. Uh, he made her be able to see. She still didn't have eyes, but she was able to see. So she looked as if she couldn't, but turns out she could by the virtue of this saint. Or other um, modern saints, let's say, like uh, Therese Neumann or this uh, yogi that lived without food for many, many years and was put into laboratory and so forth, and he wouldn't even pee, he would just reabsorb his urine and so forth. They would put in a lot, a lot of work, a lot of prayer, a lot of yoga, whatever their tradition was about, and from that obtain perfection in what they were doing, and from that perfection naturally arises um, all sorts of miraculous, wondrous powers. Within the lecture today, we want to give you a nice overview, um, a timeline throughout the ages somehow and through, throughout different traditions and hopefully uh, spark your interest in um, these uh, accomplishments so that also you can start practicing in that direction. That is always the point in the end of the day. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, Tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.